Remember we finished this problem really quickly and do you think we need to go over it again? Yes. yes? Are you sure? Isn't it boring? Uh, let me uh, go over it without writing new things. So there is this line of charge, right? I want to find the electric field over here. If the fans are not doing anything, we can turn it off. But if, if you think they are functional, it's very good for circulation. OK, good. Um, so what, what we did is we chose a DQ, right? And we said that it has its own DE. And the vertical parts would cancel each other. So we went with only the horizontal part, which is DE cosine theta, right? So far, so good. Then we said that DE over here is going to be KDQ over distance squared. And this distance is A squared plus Y squared, distance squared. All right. So our Thing, uh, our, the thing that we need to integrate looks like this. And it has three variables, th theta, y, and dq. As Efe, Efe, right? Efe told us why we don't go ahead with y. So what happens is that if you go ahead with y and represent everything in terms of y, to take the integral of uh, the expression that you get, you still need to do a trigonometric transformation. You, you see? It's like showing your ear like this. You might show your ear like this in the exam. No problem if you go all the way, OK? But after the experience, you show your ear like this you, because you know that this problem will lead you to trigonometric uh, substitution. substitution. So that's why you are going to, uh, we prefer to go with theta itself. How do we do that? We basically write, so y over a is tangent theta, right? Opposite divided by adjacent. That's why y is a times tangent theta. And the derivative of this expression is dy equals a times 1 over cosine squared theta, d theta. And we wrote dq as lambda times dy where lambda is charge density, linear charge density, which is Q over L. So we have an expression for dQ in terms of theta. We have an expression for dy in terms of theta. So we put everything together, and we get lots of cancellations. And we end up with this simple integral of over cosine. right? Cosine theta integral is sine theta. So we go from minus theta 0 to plus theta 0. By minus theta 0, I mean this one. Plus theta 0 is this one. And that's the expression that you get. OK? Good. Very good. Can Tell me. You? Sure. Can I ask you first? Yes? Can I ask you something? Resmi açabilirim. OK. Burada DQ'yu mesela eşit uzaklıkta seçtik ya. Mesela biraz yukarıda seçseydik yine yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the question is, we chose this DQ, uh -huh. right? So for each DQ that we choose, we know that there is a DQ that will cancel. Mm. For this one, one, yes, this one. For this one, this one. Uh -huh. So we just chose, uh, we just plotted them to show you that vertical, uh, there will be vertical cancellations. Otherwise, we, actu we are actually not dealing with one of them. We are, we, are, we are not dealing with both of them. We are just using one of them. OK? What about if you choose middle? Uh, middle is horizontal anyways. So yes, it doesn't have its vertical component. So we can choose? We, we are actually choosing anyone at an arbitrary distance y. So y is swept y is swept from minus 2L over 2 to plus 2L over 2. So we are choosing actually each one of these when we are integrating. But when we are writing the integral, we, we choose, we plot one of them and 
choose them. Mm -hmm. No. Why? No. Uh, it's it's not a problem because what kind of problem do you think it want, might no, have? I, I say it, it won't be a problem. It won't be a problem. Yeah. It won't be a problem when y is zero. And it looks easier. When? When y is zero. Yes, but you shouldn't construct your integral with a specific y. It should be a general y. Okay, because you are going to change it. You cannot set it to zero. You shouldn't uh, give it a value. It should stay as a letter, as a symbol. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Yes, very good. So, where is it? Oops. Why I keep missing it? Yes, this one. So what we have here is A times tangent theta, right? So A is a constant. And tangent theta, derivative of tangent theta, is derivative of sine theta over cosine theta, right? Do you see the whole thing, or should I? It's OK? Yes. Are you confused with this d theta? Uh, no. no. OK. So very good. Uh, we have our result. Um, let me see if it's correct. Seems to be correct. Now, what happens when L goes to infinity? By the way, uh, Ali Kemal, I, I've been watching our, my video myself, and I saw that you are actually talking about something correct. So when I ask you for this problem, when I asked what happens when R is much larger than A, what you are saying, what you are saying is the situation when A is much larger than R, mm -hmm. okay? And indeed, indeed we can go ahead and find that result over here. So this was our result, right, for that system. And I'm going to show you something with this. So let's copy this. Let me paste it here. Yeah, yeah. So, in this particular case, a is much larger than r. So, if you are looking at this thing, by the way, we for a while we have changed the subject. We will come back to this line as well. So, if a is much larger than r, then what we are going going to see is a dot. We will see this disk as a dot, right? So what do you expect if there is a dot here? You expect the electric field to be kq over a squared. Do you agree? Yes? So if a is much larger than r, let's see if we do get that or not. 2kq a over r squared. Actually, if I include a inside, it's something like this. 1 minus a over a squared plus r squared. Right? Do you think we are going to go here? Does it look anything like that? At first glance, no. But uh, we are going there if we know a bit of calculus. So what we need to know, what we need to know is this. 1 plus x to the power of n is approximately equal to 1 plus nx if x is much less than 1. Okay, this is uh, binomial expansion. You already know this. Yes? 
So we are going to uh, use that. Let's use that. 2kq over r squared. And I'm going to write it like this. 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r squared over a squared square root. Did you get what I did there? Yes? So let me just work on top of this. Like I'm going to write it down like this and like this. Are you still happy? Yes? So what do I get? I get 1 minus 1 minus 1 over 2 r squared over a squared. This is that, right? Because of this. Because a is much larger than r, Okay, are you detached from the course? No? Was it too fast? Yes. In which one? This one? Yes. So A is much larger than R. So this is very small number. So when it's very small number, uh, then you can use 1 plus X to the power of N approximately equals to 1 plus NX. Okay, that's why we are approximating this one, why 1 minus, because minus 1 half here, just drops in front of it, and it's r squared over a squared. Okay, so this one cancels this one, and 1 over 2 r squared over a squared is there. What, what do you get? 2 kq over r squared, 1 half r squared over a squared. Cancel, 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 kq over a squared. Okay? So, for very long distances, we get what we expect. Do you understand? Everybody? Yes? Good. Let's see if it's the same for this line as well. Because for the line, we get this result. Uh, copy. So if I have a line of length L and at a very long distance A, much larger than L, I'm expecting to get again. I'm expecting to get KQ over A squared. Do you agree? Yes? So let's, let's do it. A much, is much larger than L. Then square root L squared over 4 plus A squared is approximately equal to A. Right? A is much larger than L. L is nearly 0 with respect to A. Do you see what I did? Yes. Do you want to say that like, in the previous page? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's A going to zero limit, which we looked at, and it corresponds to infinite sheet. No, if A goes to infinity? Yes, if A goes to infinity, then, then what do you get? Do you see there is a cancellation? If A goes to infinity, yes. uh, it's one minus one, and it's zero. Yes. So what we did is, using binomial expansion, we, we, we noticed what remains as A goes to infinity because it goes closer and closer to zero, but not exactly. So the next term is actually this one. So that's what we have recovered. So still, A, like e goes to zero. If we yes, E goes to zero because if you are taking A to infinity, so the, the thing is that we didn't take A to infinity. We just made it much larger than R. If, we lit if you literally take A to infinity, then it's 0 again. I Even this formula is 0. When, when you said it's much larger than uh, L, I, I just instantly thought 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, it matters whether it's much larger than something or whether it's infinity. Any other questions? So for this one, our life is easier as you can see. I took A much larger than L and as a result I get directly KQ over A squared as I expected. Do you agree? Now let's go to the extreme, to the extreme where L is this time infinite, uh, not infinite. I should be careful with this language. L is much larger than A. Then what happens? Are you following? Same, not, same. not the same thing. No, uh, not at all. So let's see what happens. If L is much larger than A, then this time this one wins out. So you get KQ over A times L over 2. Did you see that? So I get 2 KQ over A over L uh, times L, right? So Q over L, what is Q over L? It's lambda. So I get E equals to, I should really write E L greater, much greater than A is going towards 2K lambda over A. And another way of writing it down is lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 A. Okay? Everybody is happy? Any questions, comments, ideas? I want you to notice something here. If I have a dot, then the electric field goes with 1 over r squared, right? If I have an infinite line, line that goes to infinity, then E goes with 1 over r. Do you see? It goes with 1 over r, 1 over a, which is 1 over r. Are you following? And when I have two-dimensional thing going to infinity, then E is independent. E is constant. You see? What about three dimensions? If I have a three-dimensional thing, so basically I have a charge that is three-dimensionally distributed everywhere, okay? But still it has a center. So it's, it's a sphere that is very, very large. And I start from the center of the sphere. If I go away from the center of the sphere, what kind of electric field do I expect? Look, uh, just follow this. 1 over r squared, 1 over r, constant. What do you have next? R. R, exactly. We will see all this. No, there is. Like, let's say there is a huge sphere. There is the center of the universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ali, uh, please. Uh, it's big, but not infinite. So there is a center. Yes, yes, yes. Then E would be zero. Mm -hmm. Yes. The last one meaning proportional to R? Let me just tell you that this is not that important right now, but still I will explain again. So sphere, it's a large sphere, okay? And you are an ant starting from the center. And the sphere, the whole thing is uniformly charged, right? So as you go away from the center, the electric field will be growing larger and larger. That's what this one is saying. 
in, inside of the sphere. Okay? Good? So it's like if you dig a tunnel inside a sphere, very tiny bit of tunnel, then put a charge here, just a little bit away from the center, then it will be shot out outwards because of the electric field. But as it goes out, it will feel more and more electric field. And we will prove that this is the case. We didn't derive it. We just followed the uh, pattern. Yeah, this one was sigma over 2 epsilon 0. This one is 2 over lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 a. This one is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 k over a squared, right? Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. Because k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon what was the question? Yes. I said uh, there is a, you know, R's are changing and... Oh, pi, pi. Uh, I don't have an answer right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> but good question. It is cancelled the calculations. Yeah, but uh, like sh she's seeing patterns so and uh, she's asking why the pattern doesn't keep repeating and... Uh, uh, I, I'm tempted to show you a no, YouTube video. <laughs> probably. When it's a particle, there is a spherical symmetry. When it's an infinite uh, like yes. line, cylindrical it's a symmetry. cylindrical symmetry. And, and when it's a plane, I mean, you cannot find neither... The guy is brilliant. Can I can't s tell anything. So He's right. Symmetry. So there is a pi when you have a dot you know, because it's a sphere. There is a pi when there is a line because of cylindrical geometry. When there is a plane, you reduce into one dimensions which has no pi in it, no circle. You can't have a circle in one dimensions. Brilliant. And then, my dear friend, will there be a pi when it's three dimensions? We are expecting a pi. Let's see whether we are getting one or not. As far as I remember, we don't get one. So, Why do you because in three dimensions as well, you can have a sphere. Yeah. It's also spherically symmetric, right? But we cannot, you know, it can be a sphere or a cube. It doesn't matter when it's big enough. So when we have it in place. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, you get, I see, okay. I see. Uh, I, I, I did my postdoc in Spain and I went to Spanish courses, and there were Italians which <laughs> would say, like, like, I don't know right now, like, there is a word which is very close to Italian. And then they, they would, the teacher would say, oh, yes, absolutely right. So it was like tiny bits of deep knowledge of Spanish while I was like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So are we going too deep right now? Uh, do, do you understand my point? Like maybe, so I can feel the concern that, okay, guys, let's talk, of course, deep stuff, but up to a limit. So let's think about it. Once we deal with the three dimensions, we come back to it. You could talk about it in the break. Yes. Uh, okay. Of course. Of course. Um... So, good, good. I'm very glad that you have this mm, interest in the course. So let's, let's go to another concept. So, uh, a less computationally heavy concept electric field lines, okay? 
So, for example, if you think about a charge, the electric field over here is huge, right? Over here, it's smaller. Over here, it gets smaller even more, and like that, right? But it's very hard to draw everything like that, broken arrows and stuff like that. So instead, we draw it like this. Instead, we draw it like this. Let me just bring it down a little bit. Like arrows coming out. So this one actually shows the direction, but what about the strength then? What is showing us the strength? How close they are is showing us the strength. Closer, closer lines, stronger field. Do you understand this? Do, do you, for example? Yes. So, in, in positive charges, they go outwards. In negative charges, they go inwards. Uh, these two charges are not at the same environment right now, okay? They are individual. Let me just put a blanket between them. These are separated, okay? Now let's put them together. What will happen if we put them together? So let me draw positive charge with red and negative charge with blue. Although I'm aware that I didn't do it here. Should I quickly fix it? No, no problem. I can fix it at home, don't worry. So for this one, we know that very close to it, the electric field lines should approach like this because when it's very close to a charge, it's all about that particular charge. And for this one, goes out like this. But otherwise, uh, we can fill them together. So let me just go straight ahead li like this, like this. And this one will go, oops. Are you happy with this drawing? OK. Uh, And this one goes on like this, goes on like this. So if you, so how can we decide what's going to happen? We can decide by imagining a positive charge, okay? And imagine that that positive charge is moving in honey, so it's not, it's not accelerating. It's, it's moving only as much as the force is pressing it. Do you understand? There is no inertia, right? And that charge would move like this, because this one would push it when it's close, push it like this as far as away as possible. But then it will start filling this one, so it will fall back here. So that's what it is tracing. All right? And for example, these field lines tells us that over here the electric field is high, over here it's low. Why? Hmm? It's closer uh, downstairs, it's further apart upstairs, right? Okay. One complication that y you may face is if you have, let's say, plus 2Q here and just minus Q here. So this tells you that 
from this one, there will be twice as m many electric field lines going out. So let me, so how many we plot depends on our taste, but the ratios should follow. So if this one is eight, this one has to be 16. You see my point? And to match them, you can imagine that when you are matching them, you will have this kind of problems. Like, it's not really a problem, but something you should be careful about. My, it's very hard to draw. Um, so, okay. And like that. And like that. So the point is that it will be bulgier on the smaller charged part. Why, why it is more spread apart? Because of the strength of the electric field closer to the smaller Q is less than the strength of the electric field closer to 2Q. Does it make sense? Yes? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, no. You didn't miss anything. I missed. You thought that you missed something, <laughs> but you didn't at all. No, no, no. Brilliant. Very good. Very good. What if you have two positive charges? Let me just go with plus Q, plus Q here then it will be like this. Okay, I'm just randomly drawing them, not uh, so that we don't lose too much time on this. Okay, and all of them are going out of the charges. Any questions, comments? No? Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. They are not very good question. Not necessarily compensated. That's the question, right? So, which means that, which means that there could be a charge here that would start over here and would never end up on the negative side. Do you understand this? Yes? Because plus 2Q would push it so far away uh, that it would never return back. And once, once, plus, uh, once that charge is really, really far away, really, really far away, it will see this system as point charge that has a charge of plus Q. So 2Q and Q are sitting like this, but as you go far away, they look like plus Q and it's... So half of the time, when, when you start from here, half of the test charges in honey will never return. Tell me. Yes. Very good question. Thank you. So what you realize is that not necessarily everything that comes out of a plus charge should end up in the negative charge when the system in total is not uh, neutral. If it's neutral, every negative, every positive line, everything coming from the positive should end up eventually in the negative. Ali is thinking about these obscure cases when it starts from here, right?
force diagram for the single particle and observe yeah. the, the what distances yes. the plus charge and minus charge particles. It's a nice a computer code there. that you can write at home if you are into that kind of stuff. You can write a computer code which will generate this field lines. Okay. Electric dipoles. Yet another subject for today. So why do we care about them? Because they are found in nature. So let me just give you the example of water. So oxygen is more electronegative. Is, isn't that the case? It is the case, right? So what will happen is that oxygen will suck more electrons towards it. So it will be more negative on this side and more positive on the other sides. So as a result, it will create a dipole moment, something called dipole moment, electric dipole moment. So we represent electric dipole moments with plus Q. This is just simplified representation of electric dipoles. There is a plus Q, there is a minus Q, and there is a distance between them, L. And P, let me just have an arrow. P is pointing from minus to plus, and it is Q times L. This is called electric dipole moment. OK? So electric dipole moment interacts with electric field differently from the way electric monopole interacts. So this is called electric dipole. This by itself, by itself, is an electric monopole. Also, this by itself is electric monopole. Do you understand? But when they are together, it's an electric dipole. OK? What happens if you have plus, minus, minus, plus. And this one is called electric quadrupole. OK? Can we put them together in this exact order? Yeah. Uh, OK. So. Let's say there is something and the charge is distributed in a weird way, not centrally symmetric. So, okay. So, for any, yes, molecule is a good example. So, a molecule would have, so for example, water has an electric monopole of zero because it's neutral in total, right? If you look far away from it, uh, it doesn't have total charge, water molecule, right? But it does have a dipole moment, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it has a quadrupole moment or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but there is an expression that would give you the quadrupole moment. So every charge distribution can be expanded, just like Taylor expansion. It can be expanded in terms of monopole term, dipole term, quadrupole term, etc. Okay. So why do we care about dipoles? Because they interact uh, with electric field. So let, let's say you have an electric field pointing in this direction. This is the electric field. And you have a dipole, electric dipole here. Let's say plus Q here, minus Q here. But they are attached, OK?
they are attached together. They can't live, they can't separate. Right? Now, a monopole follows the electric field. When electric field is towards the right, plus charge would go to plus, minus charge would go to minus. But these are attached to each other, so this one would feel QE in this direction, and the other one would feel QE in that direction. Right? Let's call this theta. So it wouldn't feel net force, but it would feel net torque, right? So net force is zero, but net torque, let's calculate torque. Do you remember torque? R cross F. R cross F, very good. So in our case, uh, we can say that it's so let me just show you like this. This distance over here is L over L over two times sine theta. Do you agree with that? Yes? And the other side is also L over two sine theta. So you have you basically have Q E L over two sine theta times two because they are both rotating in this direction. So the magnitude of the torque, let me just write the magnitude of the torque, is going to be Q times E times L times sine theta. Remember, this was electric dipole moment, right? So Q times L appears in this expression. As you can see, it appears as Q times L times E times sine theta, which is P times, so I can write it like this, P times E times sine theta, which is magnitude of torque. Is this clear? Yes? So when you have these vectors, vector products times sine theta, you can jump to the conclusion. Don't do it always, but usually means that it's a cross product. And indeed it is. OK? So let me tell you what we mean by this. This is dipole moment pointing in this direction, right? Do they teach you cross product in high school? No, no right? No. So yet another goodbye to high school and to human intuition, really, because... Um, they teach it in the first week of physics 101. Yes, yes, but still it's 101. So cross product... Uh, we rarely encounter cross product in real life. So usually it's you push this way, it goes that way, right? You don't push this way and it goes this way. Well, uh, we do get it in bicycle and stuff like that, but our brain handles it without any <laughs> mathematics, right? But when you spin a wheel and put it on one side on a string and it doesn't fall, you are surprised, right? It's counterintuitive. Anyways, cross product. Uh, when we're walking to like, we're pushing that way and we're going that way. No, that's still uh, linear, in yes, in the same direction. Uh, let's have a break at this point and we will continue.